Hey, it's uh, Kevin and Brian back again. Uh, this time we're going to look at some considerations for designing inside a warehouse. Uh, everything from what's on the rack today that wasn't there last week uh, and how you plan for these things to making your design work faster. And we're going to look at visualizations of the access point actually placed higher in the building up on the ceiling versus placed down at the standard office height of about eight feet from the perspective of the client. Uh, so if you just, just design from the standard height and then the AP is suddenly you know, 30 or 40 feet in the air, that's going to impact how the client receives you. So those are important, important things to, uh, to visualize. And it uh, looks like Kevin is ahead of me. He's going to uh, go ahead and scale. Well, we've imported the map. And yep. we, uh, as always, the first thing we have to do is we always have to set our scale. And we'll just use this, which is already defined at 126 feet. It's always nice when the map has a scale on it because the person who drew the map drew the scale. We have some things already drawn here, kind of like a cooking show. We made these last night, so we don't have to worry about you uh, watching us bake today. But uh, there's some, some tips to this. They're, that's uniform. They're all the same, and it wasn't a CAD drawing, so they didn't automatically import for you. So you could get carpal tunnel by tracing all of these over and over and over. Or you can do uh, what we're going to do, and uh, we're just going to select you can select the wall type and draw it or we've already got some there because you guys have seen you know tracing around something before you can copy and paste that over but kev you will uh, he's drawing the outside wall but let's and, let's do the outside walls yeah exactly let's do that first. and those little lines you guys see on the right and the bottom those are parking spaces outside the building sometimes you get extraneous information on your drawings and you have to realize that's not really a wall i don't need to worry about it just like the line going underneath the, the wording here, existing storage building, that's just a line somebody drew there. It's not really a wall. And the round so, uh, things in the middle are pillars in, in, the, in the storage building. So in, in this case, we've got our racks that are here. They've, the, you always want a floor plan that includes the racks. The racks may change at times, but you always want to include the rack information um, in the map. And you want a map that actually shows the, the, the racks with as much accuracy as possible. So as you're selecting here, you've got your wall types, but you can also do a, a rectangular uh, attenuation area or a free form if your racks aren't very uniform. So we, can, we just did a, uh, a rectangular and we created, we created this, this rack first. And then what we've done is we've copied it and pasted it and then just moved it on there. And we can, we can do this as a, a big time saver without having to draw each one independently. And you can also copy and paste more than one at a time, which makes the, the savings even better in, in terms of your, your time. Well, well, since this might, is very, since, uniform. since this is uniform, let's, uh, well, they're, they're different from this to this, but they're uniform here. Let's just do, copy those three, move over here, paste, And I think the ones in the center are off a little bit. Yeah. Or offset. But you, you, you get the idea of how it. much time to save because even, even though we had to adjust a couple of them, that's still better than drawing each of them by hand over and over and over. So that, that's a huge time saver being able to copy and paste those walls like that when they're all identical. And this is actually better than a wall because it's a, a rectangle representing merchandise on those shelves rather than just a one line. So that whole area is an attenuation area rather than one line that says I'm a warehouse rack. Now you can adjust what this value is if you've had the, the benefit of being able to go on site and actually measure. And you can either take an average of all the different racks that you've measured, or you can just choose the one that had the most obstruction on it and use that as your base because today's um, warehousing the things that are on the shelf this week are not always the things that are there next week. So you can either you know, plan for the average or plan for the worst. And so he's chosen here a warehouse rack, but you can edit that. And you can you know, come up with your own custom walls or your own custom attenuation areas and make that what's really there. There's no, uh, no substitute for good data. So you can actually measure that and get it exactly right. And what he's doing now is he's changing the height of that wall that uh wall of the racks of the yes. racks 
So it's, you know, it's 15 feet instead of a standard you know, eight foot wall. It's actually taller because warehouses are taller. Now he's got a custom one that he can draw in there anytime he wants, any shape he wants that matches that criteria. So now you can see it's at 14. And if we take a look here at this, it's now 15 feet high. So our racks and product go to 15 feet high. 